let me tell you about him. Um, how long ago did you come to the United States? I came to the United States 2003. 2000, 2003, yeah. he was walking the beach. Um, picking up garbage. Picking up garbage. <laughs> and um, now he just now took me in on a ride in his Lamborghini. So anything's possible. Anything's possible. <laughs> Open the valve. Yeah, you can open the Yeah, valve. you can go out there too. And if you look to the left, you can see the. Um, I see. I see my car right here. <laughs> we can own it or my. <laughs> my wife is terrified to balconies. Oh really? Yeah. If now I will live in a condiment right here on the beach. Terrified to balconies for the kids, you know. Um, entities that is gathering information about people. So when you understand that dynamic of Facebook, you look at Facebook at a, from a whole different perspective. Uh, they have over 50,000 data points on you. So they know, they know where you're at right now. They know your location right now. Uh, they know what you like. They know what you've been talking about. They know your purchases. They know your behaviors. They know all of these things about you. So think of that. Think of there's not another type of advertising platform that can give you so much critical information. So, uh, so that's the first thing that you have to understand, that Facebook is more than a social media platform, but it is, it is an entity that is gathering thousands of uh, data points about every one of its user. Uh, may maybe you realize this or not, but if your phone is on, Facebook is learning about you. Just, just say something like, take for example, say, I want to go to Aruba. I love Aruba. Aruba seems like a nice place. Ah, oh, you know, let's go to Aruba sometime. You talk about Aruba enough, next thing you know, you will start to see ads about Aruba. Has anybody seen that true before? It's, it's kind of spooky. All my friends say, that's spooky. I say, I love it. That's awesome. Um, so it's, it's getting a lot of information about you. That information you can use for ads. Uh, if, you, if you said, hey Paul, I want to target people that live in Los Angeles, that are 25 year old women that are married, that have three kids, that are a college graduate, that make $100,000 or more, and they like Siamese cats. I could target them. I could target them. So whatever your product is, whatever uh, your, what your service is, with all of that information, you can make an awesome profile, an awesome avatar for the audience that you want to target. Um, is it dying? No, I think the contrary can be said. Uh, the, the time that people spend on social media, this is the way I like to look at it. Uh, years ago, people would spend a large amount of time in front of television, and television was the point where advertisement was placed. But now, it's being done on the phone. Um, this is what I like to say. If I can get on a person's phone, I can get in their wallet. 
So if you can get on a person's phone, you have their attention. Um, that's where, forget about the TV, forget about the radio, get on their phone. If you can get in their phone, you can get in their wallet, you can get in their pocketbook. So uh, uh, Facebook is always changing. Their, their algorithm, um, I was just talking with uh, some of my uh, friends that are here with me um, this evening and there was a time that you could have ads perform at such a, a, a cheaper rate, different things that you could do, uh, but now it's changed. It costs you more, you have to evolve with it. And so they're always changing. They're always you know, changing the way that their algorithms always, but this is what I've learned about Facebook's algorithm when they change, is initially it might be scary for you, but when you learn to adapt, they're not going to do anything that is going to alienate their advertisers. The advertisers are their money, their bread and butter. So they're going to do everything uh, to keep us happy. So you just have to learn to adapt. You have to learn to um, evolve with their changes. And really it makes the marketplace for advertisers better because it demands a higher level of efficiency and quality of work. Because Facebook, this is um, what Facebook's model is. If they give a good user experience, that's their first priority. So it doesn't matter how much money you spend on Facebook, if you're not giving the users a good user experience, they don't care. They've learned that if they give users a good user experience, the money will come. So that puts a challenge on us to give them good content, give them quality ads, um, give them value and that improves the platform and that will improve the whole field of marketing. Come on over here. This, this is... Um, Hello uh, everybody. This is Gabriel. Um, Gabriel runs uh, e-commerce and he's got products that he's um, selling $100,000 a day. $100,000 a day. So... Um, yeah, awesome. So it, let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you about him. Um, how long ago did you come to the United States? I came to the United States in 2003. 2000, 2003, yeah. he was walking the beach. Um, picking up garbage. Picking up garbage. <laughs> and um, now he just now took me in on a ride in his Lamborghini. So anything's possible. Anything's possible. So sh share a little bit about your story. Absolutely. So my name is Gabriel Belter and I'm actually with the Econ Millionaire. I don't know if you, any of you guys went to the 10X Growth Con, Gran Cardone. Any of you guys? Yay! Okay, cool. So we were uh, we were platinum endorsement of Gran Cardone. Uh, very proud for that. Our brand is the Econ Millionaire. So we had an interview on Gran Cardone TV with uh, Digital uh, Cash Flow. So I partnered up with Coach Gianni, and that's what we do in the Econ Millionaire. So pretty much, I started e-commerce two years ago. My first year I did like over a million dollars and last year I did over eight million dollars in sales. And now I'm, I'm just, you know, pushing even higher numbers to that because obviously we learn as, as we walk through the Facebook journey. So, um, like I said, pretty much I started this journey entrepreneurship two years ago. My life changed 160 degrees, 80 degrees. Uh, I worked a lot, a lot on mindset and that's what actually took me to, to where I'm at today, you know, meeting up the right people, being in the right place like you guys are doing right now, investing in myself and knowledge and taking action. So what I would like to share with you guys because I see a lot of you guys are using Facebook guys, right? Okay, so, so I'm going to start with the left, my left, probably your right hand side of the table where the lady with the red is at. Okay, the general was running a uh, sound disorder. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, it's probably a phone or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, we're back. We're back. So, I will say for uh, how many of you guys are running lead campaigns, generating leads? Okay, cool. So, I will give you a couple tips because I, I did it before e-commerce. I, I was doing CPA marketing, running campaigns, generating leads for real estate and all the stuff. So what I think uh, that I can share with you guys that you can take actionable stuff right now and benefit your, your campaigns and budget could be that if you already have leads, 
you need to upload those leads to Facebook audiences and create an audience on your own leads and create lookalike audiences based on those leads. Because the way that I encountered myself on, on making a, pro, a product that is not even profitable to making millions of dollars with it and make a profit out of it, it's moving your audience from cold to warm, okay? You, you guys want to move your audience from cold to warm. What is cold? Cold audience is pretty much when you target, and the, the way you do targeting is, is funny because Paul did zero targeting. I have done that myself, but after I have a winning product, when my pixel is already seasoned. So what I do is I first start with a big, big keyword, which could be fitness, right? It's millions of hundreds of people. And then what I do is I run video ads and I segment the audience uh, based on 95% of engagement on the video. After that, what I do is I create a custom audience to that particular audience and I let Facebook create a look-alike audience based off that. So now what I'm doing, guys, is pretty much moving my product from the competition, which I call the red ocean, to the blue ocean, which is gonna be your own targeting because once you create a look-alike audience from your video views that are the people engage 95% of the content, it's gonna be unique to you. It's not gonna be an audience, but it's gonna be with a lot of competition like when you're targeting an interest. So you can use this technique to generate leads, to run e-commerce products, and to advertise any type of services or products. So that's the one tip that I can, for what Paul yeah. is sharing with you guys, that I can share with you guys, is focus on warm audiences, moving them from cold to warm, by utilizing whether you have a thousand purchases, you can export those emails of buyers, upload them to Facebook, and create a lookalike audience on a region which could be United States, if you sell in the United States, and create a lookalike 1%, 2%, all the way up to 10%, and split this every single one you can start with literally ten dollars per ad set a day after three days you're gonna see which one is the winner and that's the one you're gonna be scaling okay okay i have a quick question sorry um so you're saying that you're gonna full target and then after you do that 95 percent engagement that's the custom audience Yes, so exactly. So what you gotta do is you're gonna go to Facebook audiences, you're gonna click in custom audience, and the last tab is gonna say the engagement. When you click on engagement, you're gonna click video, you're gonna select the video and you're gonna select it's gonna Facebook is gonna give you okay. You wanna create an audience from the people who watch three seconds, five percent of the video, ten percent, all the way up to ninety-five percent. So if this is a video, obviously I wanna focus on the people who went all the way to the end. So if you have a video that is two minutes, it's even better, better targeted people. So once you do that, right, you're gonna create a custom audience, you can name it such product, 95% video views. Then once the audience populate with, I, I don't know, 3,000 people or more, you're gonna highlight the audiences and click uh, look, create custom lookalike. And that's how you're gonna literally take 100 or 3,000 eyeballs that are uh, engaged with the entire content and you're gonna multiply those 3,000 into up to 20 millions because Facebook will match their profile. And that's why Facebook is so powerful for whatever type of businesses we run. Literally, once you learn Facebook, you can run any type of businesses. I'm on the e-commerce is because the ROI we get is immediate and we get paid every single day. So the cash flow we generate with e-commerce is extremely fast, you know? And that's why right now my vehicle is e-commerce. So when you create a lookalike audience, do you just, because I know it's one, it's one through 10, we split test a lot of that stuff. We never go past five. Like we normally do like one to two. Where do you set that bar? I go, I don't do one to two. I do 1%, 2%, 3%. I create every single one so from one to 10. Yes. Yes. And then what I can tell you, it's like, this is just the, the, the very uh, tip of the iceberg because I go as far as people creating uh, custom audiences from buyer's email, from people who added to cart but did not purchase, from initiate checkout. Exactly. So your first lookalike to see if the product is going to be scalable. It's gonna be a lookalike based on the people who engage with the video first. After that, you're gonna do people who actually view the content on the landing page. Okay. 
okay? Uh, something else that I can offer you guys, just uh, to, to give you free value here, if you guys can text 797979 with the keyword 10X, uh, you guys can get access to my $1 million in one single month case study with a single product. That way you guys can see the potential and, and, and lookalikes because that's exactly what I did. Can you repeat that one more time so they can write it down? Yes, it's 797979 and the keyword it's 10x. Just text 10x and you're gonna receive the digital access to one of my basic courses on e-commerce where I teach you how to launch your Shopify store. I give you 10 profitable products that I personally run, I'm running right now and uh, a million dollar case study, that way you guys can get to see the bigger picture of e-commerce. We, we can send the, send the info in the text message too. Last quick question for you, Gabriel. When you're running it, at, when you're, I'm sorry, when you're creating the ad campaign, are you selecting it as an engagement ad, as a traffic ad, as a push? That's the trick. I start right off the bat with website purchases on purchase pixels. Uh, that's what I do because uh, as we do drop shipping, we don't want to waste time of warming up every single step of the way. So what we do is we just test uh, right away with website conversion and purchases. If the product does not sell, it's not profitable within like uh, $300 spend, which is three days running 10 different ad sets, I just literally move to the other product. Now, if you guys have a product that is your own brand, this is the way I do it that I have the pleasure to work with Paul and some of like uh, A from the rubber store. We were managing his e-commerce stuff. What we do is we literally run three objectives. We run post pre engagement to create the viral content and engagement of the ad himself. We run video views to generate the, the viral uh, visual of the people because when, when customers or actually users see a video with a lot of views and a lot of engagement, it's when they actually stop. And I split this in a lot of times, I don't know if you have done that too, but when you have an app with zero engagement and it doesn't even have a million views, people tend to just skip it. So I do three campaigns. I do a website conversion on an add to cart, which is my first step closer to the purchase. I do a video view, right? And then I do a post per engagement, checks to keep the engagement, the video, the video views going, and at the same time to build a custom lookalike from the people who view the video as fast as they can. That's why I think you guys should concentrate a lot on video because the, the, the points of data on video, it it's, it's has a lot of advantage from the, just the, the, the picture, the, the image. Because on video, we can actually segment the people who watch 50% of the video, 95% of the video, or actually create a custom audience from the customers or, or users who watch only three seconds. So what I do, with the people who actually watch only three seconds is I create a custom audience just to exclude them. So when I duplicate campaigns to actually scale out to, I don't know, $50,000 spent a day, the way I exclude them so I don't overlap too much is I said, okay, Facebook, campaign one, and campaign two is gonna be excluding the people who actually already view my content for three seconds. That way my second ad set is not gonna show to the person who actually was captured by the first ad set. Make sense? It's yeah, like creating a bucket, exactly. It's like creating a bucket to exclude the people so you don't repeat the ad to the same guy. What's a good overlap percentage? 10% below? Um, I have ads, being honest with you, that uh, they even show 60% overlap and they're still profitable. So, so it's all about it's all about how much overlapping you do. And once you start realizing that uh, the ad that I was doing great yesterday, today is doing really bad, and the new ad set is doing amazing, you gotta check those two, the overlap, because sometimes it's better to have one ad set and scale it up on, on a big budget. But the problem with that that I have myself is that you have to be more on top of it than just duplicating, right? Because big budget artists, they tend to do really well and then they just die out. So you gotta manage more, you know? And uh, going to your question before, I do everything out a bit because when I do manual bid, it's like a hit and miss. It's still like a hit and miss for me, you know? Unless you do like Paul says, sometimes I set up $10,000 budgets with a low bid, but sometimes it only spend two pennies. So it's like a hit and miss still for me. So I think the best way is to really take the audience from cold to warm and focus on the warm audience. That's where you want to spend the most money after we acquire the data. And then are you copying the, the post ID? Yes, yes, absolutely. You have to make sure 
Great question. You have to make sure when you do 10 ad sets that you grab one post ID from one ad and then you do it in all of them. Because every time we duplicate and we don't do that, you're going to end up duplicating and creating new ad sets that they're not going to have the social engagement. So what happens is I've, I've done that before and sometimes it'll show, like when we do viral video content, it'll we'll copy the post ID, we'll boost it as like from, we'll switch it from engagement to traffic. And then what'll happen is when we advertise it, it'll show the video got like 1.3 million views, but it'll like cut the, the, uh, the likes, the comments and the shares. So what happens when that happens? Well, first, first, first of all, the video, the video, the you know, the way you do the video has to be engagement. It has to be engaging people. It has to be a killer content. Uh, if you, what kind of uh, stuff you do? You do in e-commerce for regular products, or? Yeah, so we do, we do a lot of uh, two-step URLs. We have a Shopify, store, Shopify storefront, and then we redirect that to the Amazon listing. Okay. Um, how are the videos you're running? You're running cool videos that makes people want to buy them, or, yeah. or? yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Like so the professional 4K if available, otherwise 1080p, 60 to 3 minute videos, you know, okay. models if necessary. Yeah. Okay. So again, the question was, what happened with you start losing shares and engagement? Like what will happen is like we'll copy the post ID, but then it'll delete the because you know like you can't change the text too much, otherwise it'll say we're gonna create a new post. Yes, yes. Sometimes when we duplicate the, the page ID, what'll happen is it'll it'll just still still delete it without even bringing up that hey warning you're gonna delete your engagement if you change like it'll will copy it, but it'll actually delete the engagement. Oh, I never had that happen to me. That's the first time I hear that. That actually, yeah, when you, you gotta be careful. Um, what I do from the beginning, uh, this is what I do is I literally create, let's say I'm selling this iPhone case, I create 10 axes with 10 different interests which are gonna be the first, the biggest keyword. So I will target iPhone case and then I will do suggested by Facebook 10 interests. And then I will grab the, the ID, the post ID from the first one and, and duplicate it into every single one of them. And then I automatically go and create the audience so I can have my my audiences created from the first day. But I never have the issue that my ad is literally deleted and replaced by a new one with zero, zero. You may have to review that and go back to page post and see if the video, because I don't think Facebook will delete that video. It's probably, it's, you probably over... It's shared. Yeah. Reposted the video. Yeah, you probably repost the video, but the video should be in page post. You gotta scroll through through the many windows you're gonna have and find the video that has the, the, the engagement. And maybe grab it again and do it again. No problem. Man. So, so can I get, can, can I give another uh, point here? Um, in marketing, surround yourself with good people. <laughs> Actually, how do I get your number? <laughs> so uh, I was going to ask you because I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh my god, this is I'm like completely overwhelmed with all this language. That I have I have no clue. I have tremendous experience in healthcare, but I don't have any experience on Facebook or e-commerce. Uh, I just learned about it at the tennis conference. Um, and I'm uh, very excited to take it on, but I'm running a business. And my, my question to you is, what, what do you think would be the best investment for me to get, you know, who do I get to actually teach us? I know I'm going to, you know, all these courses, but technically I cannot see myself uh, even, I'm, I'm, a, I'm scared of Facebook, sure. I'm scared of e-commerce. This is so new to me. Um, you know, I'm over my 50s, so it is, uh, it's, you know, I see all these young kids here, right next to me, um, so technical and, and with the language that I have not looked. So what do you, what do you advise me? What should I do to be able to take my business to Facebook and e-commerce? So, so this, this is what I suggest, um, and this is kind of a personal thing in my business, is I do what I do and I stay in my lane. Uh, because 
I could learn YouTube, I could learn Google, I could learn this, and I could learn all of these different things. And I'm sure uh, you guys are bright people and you could learn this, but it's gonna take your time, it's gonna take your energy, your resource, and maybe even take your focus off of what you really need to be doing and what you do best. So in opportunities like that, I think uh, it's probably in your best interest Find an agency, hire an agency that you can um, work with that will do it for you. And you focus in on your products uh, and what you do best and you you stay to that. Um, it's an investment, but I, I can tell you, like for, for us, um, when, it, when it comes to agencies and working for marketing, there's there's a lot of um, good ones and unfortunately there's a lot of bad ones. A lot of times when we get into um, a call with a client, they uh, say, oh we spent this much money on stuff and we didn't get any results and I'm like, I'd love to work with you because I, can, I know that I'm going to make you happy because if uh, number one, we don't take on clients unless we are 100% confident that we can make them money and then if we get going and we're not making them money, I don't charge them anything and I will say, hey, it's just not going to work. 